Have you ever experienced what happens when a cruise line has to pirate-proof a ship? Me neither, but it's happening right now. So let me talk to you a little bit about what's going on. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm coming to you from the top deck of MSC World Europa, which is one of the newest cruise ships from MSC Cruises. Now, one thing that you might find a little bit odd is that it's so dark and that the camera is actually beginning to struggle to pick me up. Now, the reason why none of the lights have come on on the ship tonight is that we're actually sailing in a particularly dangerous body of water right now called the Gulf of Aden. Now, the reason why it's classed as a dangerous part of the water is that it's unfortunately pretty famous for modern day piracy or pirate attacks that have taken place in previous years. Now, as a result of that, there's a number of things that cruise lines will do to make sure that passengers are as safe as we possibly can be when cruising in this part of the world. And at the same time, there's a number of things that passengers must make sure they do on board to, I guess, help keep each other as safe as possible. Now, in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to talk to you about. So what can you expect if you end up cruising in a part of the world that is unfortunately subject to these kind of attacks. So look, let's get back inside and I'll talk to you about it in a little bit more detail when we get into the comfort and the light of my cabin. Okay, so now back in the comfort of my inside cabin and what can I say? Pirates, that is one thing that I probably didn't think I'd ever think about pirates on a cruise ship to be honest with you. But the reality is where we're sailing at the moment is unfortunately an area that's yeah, pretty well known for some incidents that have happened in the past. Now, does this kind of thing happen every single week where cruise ships go through this part of the world and get attacked by pirates? No, absolutely not. Have there been problems in the past where things have potentially gone pretty wrong? Yes. Now, we're not going to go into individual examples of them today because Google can be your best friend looking at them. But what I wanted to discuss with you today was... I guess some of the things that cruise lines do and to be honest to give you a first-hand account as to what's going on on this ship at the moment as we prepare to and then proceed with sailing through such an area. So first of all look where actually are we? So the Gulf of Aden is a body of water that we are travelling through in our transit up to Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. Now geographically right now we have got Somalia on one side and we've got Yemen on the other side. So if you look at it on a map, we're now about to start heading up towards the Suez Canal, which will then eventually take us into Europe. Now, it's pretty rare that you would find cruising um, itineraries that would follow this exact route. But the reality is that we have got this cruise because of the fact that the ship is repositioning. So this ship, MSC World Europa, is moving from the Middle East over to Europe. Now... The most logical way to do that is to use the Suez Canal, which really is one of the busiest shipping corridors in the world. The only issue with it is that in order to get there, you have to go through what they call a red zone for piracy, which is the Gulf of Aden, essentially, where you do have kind of live pirate activity that you just have to be really, really careful of. And you have to do some things to try and deter as best as you can. Now, I guess to get down to business and what are we actually seeing on board World Europa at the moment. So two days ago, every single person received a letter to their cabin, which was sort of signed by um, the captain of the ship. Now, the detail of the letter, it essentially just confirms what dates will be affected. So in our case, from the early morning of April 1st until the early morning of April 3rd. So two full days. Um, travelling through an area considered at risk of piracy and therefore we are under the control and protection of international naval forces. Now, the letter then goes on to talk about a colour coding system that they explained it in the letter. They then did, a, I guess, an overview on the Tannoy system to run through what that meant. So they have three different colours that I'm going to have to look at the letter, which shows you how much I've learned that in, in the last 24 hours. But there's three different colours. One is a, blue, a code blue, one is a code orange and one is a code red. So code red is a bit of an obvious one. Code red is there is an emergency and at that point all of the outside decks would then be fully evacuated. Now it doesn't then go into detail about what would then happen. It just says that you are absolutely required to follow the instructions of all of our trained crew. 
The code orange basically means that there's um, cause for concern and crew members will invite you to leave the decks, but sounds as though, okay, fine, no confirmed danger. And then a code blue is basically that a, a suspected vessel has been spotted somewhere around the ship and that people just need to be mindful of the fact that it's there and will just await further instruction. Now, we've got that three colour code system. We, at the moment, haven't even had uh, a code blue, so we are just sailing as normal during the day, and at night, we also haven't heard anything yet either, which is good news, and long may that continue. Now, the other thing to mention is that when we were sailing over to this part of the world, we actually heard that additional security had been brought onto the ship purely for the protection of the, all the passengers and crew, but also just general protection of the ship. Now, did notice yesterday when I was up at the buffet um, that there was a couple of smaller boats that came over and joined on to our boat and additional people came on and then also huge bits of luggage also came on. Now, from speaking to some people on the ship and also from doing a bit of research online, it would appear as though what's happened there is that it's additional security that have joined the ship and all of those boxes and equipment, that appears to be weaponry that's been b brought onto the ship when it's then been in international waters because that's where that can then be brought on board. So yeah, really interesting one. But what I would say is right now, do I feel unsafe? Do I feel at risk? I mean, yes, there's a risk. Yes, you have to be mindful. But to be honest, I feel as though we're getting taken really good care of and it's really clear that the cruise line are taking this very, very seriously. Now, a couple of things that are being done on board. So the first one you'll have seen at the very start of this video and that is that the ship is trying as much as possible to disappear into the night. Now, I find the concept of this completely fascinating because these ships are huge, absolutely massive. And the thought of not being able to see this ship out in the water, it kind of scares me a bit because of the scale of vessel that we're actually looking at here. This thing's got 21 floors, and when you see it just gradually shut down and get darker and darker and darker, it actually does really ring home that this is a serious, a serious issue that we're dealing with here. Now, what you can see at the moment, if you go up onto the top deck, so there's some basic lighting around the pool deck, but all of the other external lights are completely off. So all the navigation lights around the ship are all off. The promenade is all off. Everything is complete darkness, which is really, really strange to see. The really cool thing from a passenger point of view is that because we can still use the decks, the stargazing up there is completely unbelievable because you're in the middle of the ocean with not a single bit of light pollution, which is it's very, very rare that that would happen even on a cruise. But yeah, so the ship is in darkness and to that effect, all of the passengers on board with balcony cabins have been instructed that all curtains have got to remain shut all the way through the night. Now, what that means is that from the point of sunset on both day one and day two of our time in the Gulf of Aden, everyone's curtains have to be shut and ideally minimal lighting to be used in cabins. Now, that again is just one of those things that makes you think, hmm, okay, this is definitely something that we need to take seriously. Now, another thing that the ship has done is close some pretty key venues and some key parts of the ship for a number of different reasons. Now, the first two, so what do we have? So we've got the Panorama Lounge on Deck 7. Now, the Panorama Lounge on this ship is a show lounge built at the back with lots of glass. So to be honest, I would expect the reason that that's shut is because if you've got performances in there, you're... I mean, you're very exposed. If you've got lights and whatever on in there, you can't really hide the fact that this is a huge ship. So that's fully closed. You've then got the World Promenade, which is on deck eight, which is that section that goes all the way down with a slide in the middle. So a large part of that has been closed. So if you imagine what that looks like, you've got the first part, which is sort of internal to the ship, has got a restaurant, it's got a coffee shop, it's got a couple of luxury shops. They are still open, but when you go beyond the slide, all of that is closed. So the ice cream shop is shut, the slide is closed. There's still a smoker's area open, but the outside seating area at the back there is all closed. Now, yes, that will be due to the fact that that would emit light, which obviously we don't want right now. But the other obvious one is that deck eight would probably be a pretty key access point if 
uh, um, alien boat was to arrive because it's one of the decks that's closest to the waterline. So for obvious reasons, that is um, closed from the back. Now there's also a promenade deck on here, which is deck seven. So one deck down from that world promenade that goes all the way up to the back. Now that deck essentially is if you look at the ship and look where the lifeboats are, that would be your promenade deck. Now that's fully closed and you absolutely cannot access that because again, that would be a really key area for anyone or anything to gain access onto the ship. So that's totally shut off. There's no way you can access that. Now, the only other two points on here we've already mentioned that is number one is that lights have to be switched off on all open decks and number two is that the lights on all balconies have to be switched off and curtains need to be closed. Now, to be honest, that's pretty much all of the procedures that have been put in place on MSC World Europa to keep us safe. The only other thing that we've been told is that we'll be updated periodically throughout our transit through. And um, at the point of recording this video, we're kind of what entering night number two now. And we did receive two updates today that updated on, yes, our progress, but also just kind of anything that was going on out there. And it's been good to hear that at the moment we haven't had any activity, we haven't had any cause for concern, which is great. Now, our next port is Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, and we're planning to dock there the day after tomorrow. So that means that for us, we'll still be in this red zone for piracy until about three o'clock tomorrow morning or three o'clock tonight, however you want to word that. So we've probably got, what, about another seven hours in this area remaining. And what that should mean is that tomorrow we should hopefully, touch wood, we should hopefully wake up to a ship that feels normal again. And tomorrow night, we should be able to chill out at the back of the ship with the lights on and we'll be able to go back to the bars back there. And then hopefully that will mean that we'll just resume normal operations on here. Now, hopefully this video has been useful for, I guess, filling you in on what actually happens in the world of piracy and how that affects the modern cruise world. Because before taking this cruise, I really didn't think that this is a problem that cruise lines and cruise ship passengers had to actually face as part of a regular cruise. Now, if you haven't found my channel before and if you're not subscribed to it, I'm actually planning to spend the rest of 2023 cruising the world on cruise ships as a passenger. So if you'd like to come along on the journey, it'd be brilliant to have you. So please feel free to click subscribe underneath the video. And while you're down there, if you could give it a thumbs up as well, that would be brilliant. But yeah, look, that's it for now. I'll take you out and show you some more of those lovely dark decks. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and I'll catch up with you all soon. Thanks guys. Bye.